Jericho Joe Studio. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. This is going to be a two-part tutorial. Uh, it's really for beginners. So if you're interested in learning how to make paper mache sculptures, this is going to be a really good one to get you started. In this tutorial, we're going to be creating a killer clown jack-o'-lantern sculpture. Two different variations. One is going to be a regular shaped pumpkin form and the other one is going to be a oblong shaped pumpkin form. So let's get started with this section of the tutorial part one, creating the armature. But first we'll go over the tools and materials that you'll need for this tutorial. All right, tools and materials. I'm going to run down everything that you're going to need for this first part as well as the second part. So first thing you're going to need are a couple of uh, plastic grocery bags if you're doing the oblong pumpkin. If you're just doing the regular shaped pumpkin form, you'll only need one. You're going to need a sizable stack of newspaper for stuffing your plastic bags with. You're going to need some masking tape. You're going to need some paper mache paste. That's nothing more than a mixture of flour and water to a thin pancake batter consistency. You're going to need some paper mache clay. I do have a tutorial on our channel on how to make paper mache clay using cellulose fiber insulation. Um, but you can also buy pre-made paper mache mix that you can, all you have to do is add water to um, if you're interested in that. And you're going to need some newspaper cut into strips for your strip mache process on your pumpkin forms, a hot glue gun, hot glue sticks. You're going to need some various sculpting tools. Plastic spoon will work really well and I have these very cheap uh, sculpting tools but anything that you have readily available will work. You'll need a marker of some sort and you're going to need a blade of some sort or a serrated steak knife that's going to work well. You're going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need some thin flexible cardboard. Now this is commonly found in food packaging. You're going to need for the stem you're going to need a cardboard tube. This is a paper towel tube here. I also have a thicker or in, in a uh, smaller dimensional in dimension uh, cardboard tube. This was came out of like food packaging, like uh, saran wrap. It's very thick and sturdy, so you can use that uh, if you wanted to instead of the regular cardboard paper tube. You're going to need some paint brushes of various sizes. And of course, second part of the tutorial where we paint, you're gonna need some paint. You'll also need, and I highly recommend that you get some primer. Um, you can get a small container of primer at any home improvement store, um, or you can get a big bucket of just regular primer, white primer. Two other items that you're going to need is some sort of a uh, spray paint in any color that you choose to paint the inside of your hollow jack-o'-lantern. And then after we're done painting, uh, you're going to want to seal your jack-o'-lantern. So you're going to need some uh, polyurethane, and I would get a clear satin that will help protect it against some moisture. And one last, one last item that you'll need for the teeth is some polymer clay. I'm using the original Sculpey clay, so you don't, it doesn't have to be anything fancy or expensive, uh, just get a block of this clay. You're, that's going to be more than what you need for sh forming the teeth on uh, this for this tutorial. All right, so let's get started by balling up a bunch of newspaper and start stuffing our plastic grocery bags. Um, this is going to be pretty mundane, nothing very exciting. So of course, if you're not new to paper mache and you've created some jack-o'-lanterns in the past, uh, by all means, uh, skip through this section. But if you don't know how to create 
an oblong pumpkin using two bags, then you might want to continue watching. But all I'm doing is uh, filling the bag to the desired uh, shape, or not really the shape, but uh, as big as I want it to be. So if you want a smaller pumpkin, then of course you're not going to stuff the bag as full. Um, if you want a bigger one, then you're going to stuff that bag uh, as far as you can, you can manage. Um, I'm just squishing out the air, so that is something you want to do. Com kind of compact um, the bag by squishing out the air. So that's all that I'm doing. I'm kind of looking at the shape. Um, I think right now, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. I want this to be a bigger jack-o'-lantern um, form. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue uh, stuffing my, uh, my bag here until I get it to... Uh, as big as I want it to be. So again, I'm going to go ahead, squish out the air, and then uh, tie off the, uh, the bag. Once I get all the air squished out, tie off that bag. Kind of shaping it, forming it a little bit. With those little ends of the bag, I like to tuck those inside just to get them out of the way. Alright, now with my masking tape, I'm going to go ahead and uh, tear off a strip. And I'm going to hold those flaps um, in place with some masking tape and then when you flip your bag around you have those two little flaps on the bottom of the uh, of the plastic grocery bags um, I'm gonna just tape those off too just so they're out of my way All right, that looks like a pretty good form right there. So that looks pretty good That's going to be the base of my oblong shaped pumpkin now on to the second bag just start doing the same thing as the first uh, ball up newspaper and uh, just continue to stuff it now with this uh, with this bag here I'm not going to stuff it um, I'm not going to stuff it as big as the base bag for my oblong pumpkin I'm just going to get it to a point um, where it's it's going to be big enough Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and tie this one off, same way that I did the, uh, the first one. And I'm kind of squishing it into a more, um, well, an oblong shape for the top portion. So it's not as round, it's more oblong. And here I'm just taking my masking tape and uh, taping over those uh, tie points. On this one, I didn't, uh, I didn't tuck them inside. And again, on the bottom, I'm going to tape that off as well. And this is not only getting some of those excess pieces of plastic out of my way, but it's helping me to form that. So I'm just kind of gauging this at, at this point, the shape of it, how, how big it is, how thick it is. And now I'm just kind of compressing it, squishing out more of the air. Uh, looking at it, that's going to be sitting on top of the base. I have some areas where there's plastic that's, uh, it, I, I just need to make this a little bit tighter. And that's where your masking tape comes into play. Um, so I'm kind of holding all of that in place, forming it into the shape that I want, the oblong shape that I want. Looking at it again. Gonna get some more tape here. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my masking tape and basically tape these two pumpkins or these two bags stuffed with newspaper together to hold them in place. Um, just using some masking tape. That's all I'm doing here. all the way around 
That's what I'm doing. I'm going to get that to sit on there um, as securely as I possibly can get it. Squishing it down a little bit, shaping it a little bit. Now, right there in that area, we need to bulk that out in there. And it's a very simple way to do this. So I'm going to take some more of my newspaper. Now, I'm not going to crumble it into a ball. I'm just going to kind of fold it, crinkle it up and fold it. And I'm going to use that newspaper with some masking tape to pad the seam area between my two plastic bags filled with crumpled newspaper. So that's what I'm doing here. Just to uh, make it more secure and to bulk out that area where those two plastic bags meet each other. So I'm going to do, I did one side. And I'm going to go ahead and do another uh, piece of newspaper. Not crumbled up into a ball, but just kind of wadded up. And I'm going to wrap that around there as well using my masking tape. All right, still squishing it down a little bit. Um, kind of looking at the shape. Don't need any more newspaper, but what I am going to do is I'm going to completely cover that midsection there, that raw newspaper with uh, with masking tape. It's going to make this easier for me when I go to start doing the strip mache process with these strips of newspaper uh, applying those with the paste onto this onto this form instead of just having that raw newspaper there. So you want to make sure that you go ahead and you cover that raw newspaper that you've used to pad that area with with your masking tape completely. I've got a lot of excess plastic bag up there on the top so I kind of just I'm gonna tape that off I'm pinching it together and I'm just gonna tape it off at the top there I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side this is gonna help to form it shape it a little bit more um, don't be overly concerned about this guys because we are going to be applying clay over this after we strip mache and it's completely dry and be able to sculpt it out and form it more with our paper mache clay. This technique um, with the two bags for the oblong pumpkin form I did actually learn this from a video um, by a gentleman named Jay Olson. He has a YouTube channel called Unhinged Productions and this was one of his tutorials. So this, this is where I learned uh, this technique here. So now we're going to go ahead and get ready to start strip machine. So I've got my paste there. One thing that you do want is to have some sort of a, a bowl or something to set your pumpkin form on top of while you're strip machine. Um, I'm using a plastic Folgers coffee uh, coffee container, like a large coffee container. That's what my form is, is sitting on. And just one strip at a time here, pretty simple. I'm just going, I'm starting over from the top and I'm gonna make my way to the middle and continue on from there and uh, it's extremely important that you get enough layers of strip mache for this process I'm gonna say at least six to eight layers of newspaper strips dipped in your paste on your form the more newspaper strips that you have on your pumpkin form the stronger your armature is going to be when you go ahead and apply your paper mache clay over the dry strip mache. So that's very, very important because clay um, is heavy 
and of course wet so it needs to be able to support that weight while it is drying all right so I've reached the bottom and I'm going to start again at the top um, once I've reached the bottom there now not not the very bottom where the base is um, but at the bottom of the of the uh, pumpkin form and I'm just going to start over again do the same thing until I have my six to eight layers on that front surface of my pumpkin form all right so I'm going to go ahead and uh, you see me turning it around and I'm going to do the other side same process Six to eight layers on that side. Now once you have completely strip mache all around your pumpkin, the very last portion that you're going to strip mache is the bottom. And make sure that you get, again, six to eight layers of strips, paper strips dipped in that paste. Um, so that you'll have a very nice sturdy bottom of your armature because that's where all that weight from the clay is going to put pressure on the bottom if you don't have a strong armature um, it will end up collapsing um, once you unstuff that thing and you start applying your clay it will end up collapsing on you and that is utterly heartbreaking and disastrous so make sure you take the time and do that. Now once you have completely strip mache this thing um, all the way around and on the bottom, sit it in front of a fan to dry. This thing's going to take several days to dry. Be patient. Um, let it dry completely. And then once it's dry, we'll pick up from there. All right, my oblong shaped pumpkin is completely dry and very solid um, first thing I'm gonna do is cut a hole in the bottom of this thing and remove all the newspaper the plastic bags all that stuff so that I have a hollow form and basically what I like to do is I start in the center I put a with my marker here I'm gonna put a dot there that's my center point and then I draw four lines sort of like uh, on a compass just like that doesn't have to be perfect and then I kind of connect those those lines creating my uh, my circle and then with this little circle here that's where I'm going to cut it out. Now, make sure you're giving yourself a big enough a big enough circle to cut out so that you can reach inside there and get all that stuffing and everything out. Especially if you have big hands, you're probably going to want your circle maybe a little bit wider, um, maybe out here. So you can get your hand in there. I have small hands, so I'm not really worried about it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. Now, if you have done an excellent job with your strip mache, this should not be easy. Um, you should be able to struggle a little bit um, because it should be very thick. So. It might take some muscle, but uh, you're gonna go ahead and cut that out. Be very careful, um, obviously, with your blade. Be mindful of your fingers, and go ahead and cut that thing out. Now, if you were able to cut through this with relative ease, or if it feels like there's not, you didn't do a good job, don't continue to cut out the circle. What I recommend is applying probably another four or five layers of strip mache to the bottom part of your, your jack-o'-lantern. All right, so I cut that off. Um, here's my 
the bottom part of my bag here, so I'm just going to take my scissors, cut that out, and uh, just going to start removing the stuffing. Um, when you're removing the stuffing from the very bottom, it's going to be pretty easy to do. But I'll tell you, once you get to that upper portion, the oblong portion, if, you might struggle a little bit getting all of that out of there, but just be patient. Um, you do want to make sure that you get everything out. All of the newspaper that's balled up, both of those plastic bags, and any tape that may be stuck to the inside of your jack-o'-lantern form, you're going to want to remove that as well. All right, and as you can see, I have removed all the uh, newspaper from that first portion. And um, you can, hopefully you can see maybe the plastic bag that's in there. So that's where I'm at. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove that plastic bag. And all the tape that was on that plastic bag, anything that has got, gotten stuck to the inside of my pumpkin form. Tape, plastic, newspaper, everything. So I uh, removed everything from inside of that oblong pumpkin form. All the plastic bag, the tape, and uh, the newspaper. So it is completely hollow. Okay, one thing that I do want to point out, and that is if you cut through this thing and it has not completely dried. Um, you can still remove the stuff out of there. And in fact, it's probably a good idea as long as it's not soggy, obviously. But if you do have some areas where uh, it wasn't completely dry, that's fine. Take all the stuff out of there and then stick it in front of a fan um, for at least maybe another 24 hours let it blow the fan uh, right inside of it. And that'll, that'll ensure that it, it, it will be completely dry before you go and apply clay over it and that it won't mold as well because you, you do not want it to get moldy on the inside or on the outside of your pumpkin form. But mine is completely dry. And so uh, first thing that I'm going to do before I do any of the design work or cutting out any of the features or anything like that. I'm going to take my paper mache clay and I'm going to clay over this entire bottom of my pumpkin form and also around in the inside perimeter here of the cutout hole. And then I'm going to set that aside and let it dry. All right, we're going to move forward now and uh, clay over the entire bottom. Um, there are two reasons for doing this before you move on to do anything else. For one, it's going to allow you to even out your bottom surface so that when it sits, it'll sit nice and even. And secondly, and probably even more important, is that once that clay dries, it's going to be very solid and it'll allow you to apply lots of clay on your, uh, on your pumpkin form uh, without it putting a lot of weight and not being able to hold a lot of weight on the bottom of your, of your pumpkin. So that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, the other thing that you'll need besides your paper mache clay is a little bowl of paste. So I have my little bowl of paste and I have a couple of paint brushes and I use some paste with a paint brush to smooth over the clay after I apply it. And you'll see what I mean. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, start applying the clay to the bottom. Um, <clears throat> and now it's perfectly fine if you go up a, a little higher, um, that's perfectly fine but you do want to make sure that you clay over the entire bottom. And then the inside sections here, make sure that you're claying over on the inside, squishing it down on the inside so that your the rim there, um, you're not going to have just this newspaper. 
<clears throat> you'll have clay over that area too. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and clay over this entire bottom. All right, so I have applied my clay around the bottom and I made sure that I have clayed over the cutout. And at this point, that's where I'm going to go ahead and take my bowl of uh, paste and my paintbrush. And by applying that onto the clay, and I'm adding, I'm applying some pressure as I'm uh, applying the uh, paste over this wet clay. And you can already, sorry, that was out of view. Um, by doing that, you can already tell that it is smoothing over this clay. So you'll go ahead and do that. Make sure you get the inside part here. Um, the clay that you may have gotten on the in, the very inside rim of your cutout, don't worry about smoothing that over. Nobody's going to see it, so it doesn't matter um, because it's going to be on the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and continue and do this to the entire bottom of my my pumpkin here. All right, so I have applied my paste with my paintbrush to smooth it out. And uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and smooth it out even more by using the back side of a plastic spoon. So if you have a plastic spoon or even a metal spoon, um, that's gonna work really well for you too. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just gonna go ahead and smooth this out even farther using my plastic spoon here. And on these edges, I'm really making sure that I'm feathering that in um, to the newspaper. So that when I go, after this dries and I go in to actually do the nice sculpting and applying clay to the rest of the pumpkin form, it will blend seamlessly you won't have that ridge to worry about and cover up with clay. I went in there, I smoothed it out even farther. So this thing is going to be set aside um, in front of a fan. Um, probably the, the clay is not very thick, maybe an eighth of an inch. So I would say 24 hours, this is gonna be completely dry and we'll continue to uh, design our Killer Clown Jack-O-Lantern and start sculpting and then after we finish the sculpt we will paint um, but if you have a you can sit this on its side um, on a tabletop or something like that in front of a fan and that'll work because there's no clay um, on the sides of this or if you have one of these handy little uh, baskets here um, I got a bunch of these at the dollar store. They work really well um, for drying these larger larger sculptures. So I'm gonna sit mine like that in front of a fan and let that dry. And here's, here's just the normal pumpkin uh, form. And um, as you can see, um, I had already clayed this over. It, it has dried completely. Um, and it's very, very solid and strong. So when I go to design that and apply my clay, I won't have any worries about the bottom of it collapsing from the weight of the wet clay. All right, guys, so thank you for joining me on this first part of the Killer Clown Jack-O-Lantern sculpture tutorial. Um, next part, part two, we're going to go ahead and sculpt everything out. We're going to make our teeth out of polymer clay and attach those. Um, and then we're going to paint pri our primer, paint, and seal this thing. And it's going to be ready to go. So the next part, part two, um, it's going to be a bit of a longer tutorial than this part. But congratulations if this is your first uh, attempt at making a paper mache jack-o-lantern um, you've gotten through building a strong armature um, and we're going to carry on in the next part i'm so excited i hope you are too so thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and i'll catch
catch you in the next one.